capital city of Austin, Texas, the Frank Irwin Center, the number one team in the country, the Texas Longhorns, 9-0 on the season, the second of a back-to-back -back matchup against the Red Raiders of Texas Tech. Thanks so much for joining us this evening, Tyler Denning, Salima Rockwell, and Salima, we saw last night Texas dominant, dynamic in their straight set victory, and it was the offense we saw out of the middle. Well, and it's unbelievable. We're always talking about Logan Eggleston, but really tonight it's going to be about the middles. Last night, it was unbelievable display of volleyball, and this is something that Coach Elliott has been wanting to focus on and improve on, and that's his set distribution. It starts with getting to the ball to Asia O'Neill and Brian Butler. They both had phenomenal matches last night, and you can see the work that they're putting in the practice gym is paying off big time. The last three matches, they are hitting an astronomical 446. These two have been efficient. It's opened up the pins. You see the numbers. Seven kills for Butler, nine for O'Neill. The hitting percentages. Scorching also 11 and a half blocks for Texas as a team. For Asia O'Neill, a special night. Today, her 21st birthday. So happy birthday to Asia O'Neill. See if she can help power her team to a perfect 10-0 record. Introduce you to match to match, and that has been the struggle. 13 players available tonight as we look at the impact players. One you'll keep your eye on for Texas, the setter, Jenna Gabriel. Yep, for Texas, it is Jenna Gabriel, and we continue to talk about the offense, and it can't run without her. Texas hit 391 as a team last night, and that's a tribute to her getting the ball where it needs to go, and the hitters in the best position to score. For Tech, it's Samantha Sanders. Big match for her last night. This is their go-to attacker, six rotation outside hitter that can really do it all. She led the team in kills last night, and I would expect no less from her tonight. 11 kills for Sanders last night. Head coach Tony Greystone led Texas Tech to that fifth place finish in the Big 12 last year, best in school history. They were great on the road relative to where they had been in previous years, seven and five. Their road record four wins the most since 01. Texas led by the six time Big 12 coach of the year, Jarrett Elliott. Saw his team go 25-17, 25-20, and 25-12. That third set really their most dominant. Red Raiders will serve to start in the white tops. Texas in their burnt orange. And as we saw last night, Texas going out to the right side. And Molly Phillips for the first kill. Sophomore middle blocker from Mansfield, Texas, gets the scoring started. Morgan O'Brien, the lead row for the Longhorns, with the serve as the Red Raiders go into the middle. It's Caddy Boyer, sophomore from Georgetown, Texas, played at Hutto High School. It's a group pick to finish seventh in the Big 12, Texas pick for the 13th time in program history, 10th consecutive year to win the Big 12 is Nalani Yosia can handle the serve. And Salima, we saw this last night, second set, an 8-0 run for Texas Tech, and it was when Lindsey Dodson was serving. Dodson there for the dig, but Texas there with the block. Well, the Texas block just in a nice position, expecting this ball here. See Eggleston kind of stop short. The ball falls inside, so it's a nice move by her to reach back into the court, but get her feet set to be in a nice position to block Canis there. Logan Eggleston, number 33 for Texas, coming off an absolutely spectacular match. Tied her season high with 20 kills in just three sets. The other time was in five. She hit 462 as Texas hit 391 as a team. Maybe the most dominant we've seen them in that third set last night. Without question, they were just playing flawlessly. Timmy Peterson serving for Texas. Playing the DS position as Sanders will get a rep. You'll see that there. Texas will try Eggleston back right corner. Much of what we saw last night continuing here tonight. And that's a nice swing. She has a big block on the right side there with 
with Canis, and she was able to hit over the top and deep in the corner. Eight digs as well for Eggleston. Pass over, but nowhere there for Texas. No one, excuse me, as Morgan O'Brien came in, but just a moment late. Well, this is a tough one. This is what coaches teach their players. You watch the ball, and you're ready for the overpass. And you'll see O'Neal is just kind of focused in on the middle, really ready to get in position. But the first thing you have to pick up is the ball, because the first thing that can happen is an overpass. And that ball catching the tape off the serve from the Libro for Texas Tech. Their senior Emerson Solano from Amarillo, Texas. Ties it up at four apiece. Got to go short again, but that one catching the tape. So an ace and an air in the service line for Solano gives Texas the ball back. Just a reminder, best three out of five. Played 25 points. Win by two in the first four sets. To go to a fifth to 15, win by two. Three coaches challenges in play is Eggleston will serve the junior from Brentwood, Tennessee. First time called the name of Skyler Fields beating the defense, winning that ball. Smart play by Fields, tight set. She just pushes it through the block. Power push, right? <laughs> Don't do it. <laughs> the power tip. Skylar Fields last night, six kills. They went her way 25 times. So hit 120. And the watch is Eggleston with that big rip of the serve. Out to Sanders. Rip herself. Important for Texas Tech to get her going early. It definitely is. I mean, she, she was the hot hand last night. They're going to need her to be good, but like I discussed, they're going to need other people to have some success as well, so they're going to want to move the ball around. Also put pressure on Texas serving-wise. That's where we really saw them dip into that lead and that run last night is already three aces for the visiting team. Brooke Candice makes it four. Man, this is a tough serve. This ball is not just floating, it's moving, it's got some pace on it, it's heading out of bounds, and it's hard to track a ball that, like that. She's intentionally serving that area of the court, kind of that half between Peterson and Eggleston to try to get them in a bad spot. I saw the reaction from associate head coach Tanya Johnson, wondering where Texas was in terms of their serve receive. Gabriel will try back row Eggleston, sent back to Peterson. Great play to keep the sequence alive. There once again, Gabriel. Back row, looking for the tip. Longest rally we've seen, and it ends with a Texas kill, courtesy of Skyler Fields. Some really nice defense on both sides of the net. But Fields able to end it here. Just hitting on the inside hand. You'll see there on the inside hand of Kirby. She wasn't able to press over far enough to block the ball. Coach Elliott is saying that Fields really likes that ball that's inside more. Hits it a little better. Accelerate through on her swing. Going to the dump. Texas will. Send the ball back over. Alex Kirby, the setter, goes to the left, and Sanders, Texas, there defensively. Peterson up. Peterson, Eggleston will collide. Trying to rescue that ball, and early on, we've seen a lot of life from the Texas Tech side. I mean, Tech is just scrapping. You know, they're just playing some really good defense. Of course, Texas, they are in position to pick up this, the setter dump, which they saw last night and need to be ready for. She's going to work that as much as she can, keep them as off balance as possible. Setter for the Red Raiders, number 13, junior Alex Kirby from Knoxville, Tennessee. Gabriel for Fields, so a good start for Skyler Fields. 
definitely being smart with her swings, using that power tip again that we talked about. Three kills, five swings, 600. For the sophomore from Missouri City, Texas, went to Ridge Point High School. Takes us back on serve, eight apiece here in the first set. But this a much better start for Texas Tech than match number one. I like how active the setter is right now. You know, this is what now it's gonna force Texas to be in position. They have to block her, they have to respect her when she's front row. Gabriel will bring that ball back for Breon Butler. So Butler's first look at the offensive action, the junior from Kendleton, Texas. One of the most efficient, leads the Big 12 in hitting percentage 429 coming into this week. Mark the halfway point of the Big 12 Conference only season, 16 matches. Eggleston. High over the top of the block. And she just elevated and then seemed like she went up a little bit higher. She, she jumped and then just kept jumping. You see this ball high down the line over the top of the block. Two blockers were there. But very nice piece of offense from Eggleston. Tough serve to give Texas a chance. Gabriel into the middle for Butler off the block. That ball off the tip of the Texas defense, so teams trading points. Well, and this is where they had some success last night, running some balls quick in the middle. And I think they want to just fire in there. If they can beat the Texas block in the middle, they're going to want to try and work that tonight. Patty Boyer once again on the other side. That sequence ending with a Molly Phillips kill. Sophomore from Mansfield, Texas. Seven kills last night, three blocks, working that right side. Morgan O'Brien now serving. Goes short, look at the ace. I'm seeing a lot more serving strategy. Of course, they have the numbers from last night. They know what they want to do or what zones. At least they want to put them in a tougher position uh, passing-wise. One of the great parts of this back-to-back -back format, the intricacies going from night number one to night number two. What will be the adjustments that the coaching staffs make? Hard to stop that though. Starts with the dig. Eggleston ends it with the kill. 5-1 Texas run. And man, you see they're right in that, in between the block. That's the key. You have to be in the right spot at the right time. And Gabriel laying up in there. And Eggleston finishing off with the kill. We saw tough serving from the Texas Tech side, but now some tough serving from the Texas side. Has that got you a little action? on our social distancing enclosures. Yeah, she saved, we saved her with the plexiglass. Texas now a 4-0 scoring run. O'Brien remaining serving, goes at Solano. Into the middle for the Red Raiders. Seen Caddy Boyer quite a bit, number 12 in white. Four swing, third kill. That breaks the Texas run. Dodson has been a good server. Continues right there, targeting Eggleston, something that in the scouting report you know the teams will try to do. What's it about the Dodson serve makes it so tough? Well, it's it's got a lot of pace to it. like So it floats a little bit, but she's got some heat. You can hear it kind of thud off of her hand. So it, it's hard to control, not just because of the, the motion on it, but because of the pace. Some pace on that swing, a good start. Brooke Canis. So I like what they did. Tech moved some people around. So Canis now is playing on the right. Last night she was playing on the left, and Harmon now is playing on the left. So I think it's going to give them a bigger block and just provide a little more offense for them, allow them to move the ball around a little bit more. Canis, a preseason All Big 12 nominee. Get a swing here. The Texas block sends it back. Longhorns with a free ball attempt. But for Phillips, cannot get the dig up. Kirby 
So good back and forth here in set number one. Scrappy Texas Tech, 13. Texas, number one in the country. Squad, 17 and 13 last year, seven and nine in Big 12 play. Mentioned fifth in the Big 12, but that was their best finish in program history. Seven and five road record. Their four road Big 12 wins, the most since 2001. This Tony Greystone's fifth year, so the returning pieces, but as we mentioned, just 13 players available, eight out. The battle for them has been personnel. Mentioned it's COVID contact tracing that has kept their personnel revolving across the course of the season. Obviously a very unique fall 2020 for all of these teams, but all things considered, Coach Greystone saying, hey, I'm really happy with where we're at. We've asked a lot of players in new roles. So Texas serving Peterson, short serve at Dodson. Eggleston sent back. And that's not something we saw a ton of last night, the Texas Tech block. Well, and again, with this change, putting Canis on the right, I think that's going to be big for them. They wanted a bigger matchup because they can't just let Eggleston go off and tee off on the right side. So we'll see if it works for them offensively and def defensively. Six foot two, Brooke Canis. Remember last night, Eggleston got off to an amazing start. Ten kills in the opening set, and a lot of them looked just like that. Yeah. So that time she was like, "Okay, yep, you blocked me once. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna turn it off in a notch." She gets on this fast and hard. We talked about it last night, but for setters and Jenna Gabriel, who we will look at later in Salima's spotlight, but going back to your hitter consecutive times, maybe give them that second look, the adjustment you saw there. Now Eggleston and Gabriel knows you find that. Your best attacker, just get her the ball. The man hits that layout by O'Brien with a beautiful dig. That creates this situation for Gabler, Gabriel and, and Eggleston. So Eggleston, five kills, 10 swings, 400 coming off an amazing performance last night. And put that in perspective, the 20. And blossom a little bit. And that's what Coach Elliott said he's seeing with her. Have some more from Eggleston after the end of the second set. So things to watch for, Salima Spotlight and that piece on Logan Eggleston. And we have some pretty good action here in set number one from the Irwin Center. Eggleston serving after the Tech timeout. Over on the serve, and Texas continuing to pressure their zone service-wise. And definitely a nice change up for Eggleston. She normally goes back there and bombs it. You saw the passes were, were deep, not expecting her to drop it short. It's an aspect of the game Coach Elliott has talked a lot about, trying to hone in on more opportunities created from service pressure. I feel that they have some unique pieces in Eggleston, Yosia, amongst others that they can do service-wise. O'Brien to the floor, can't get to that ball. And again with Tech, having those hitters supporting Sanders here a little bit. Have Canis go to her, get some off balance, can go back to Sanders to score. We talked about it in break as well to me. You mentioned in the middle some more offense we've seen from Boyer. So that adjustment, it's always so great for us to see from night one to night two what teams will do. Texas up by five, siding out at a 62.5%. As the now 21-year-old Asia O'Neill serving. it alive and gets it over. It was a one-fist punch from Peterson as Texas will win the point. And Texas doing a nice job at the net. You'll see their blockers just pinched in on their middle and then they're scrambling around on defense. I can't even believe that ball stayed alive. How do they even keep it going? So it was three, it was Fields that punched at it. Ashley Shook, who's now in the front row for Texas. As the front row there, Fields pushes the ball down. 
So number nine in the burnt orange top, Ashley Shook, the senior from Plainfield, Illinois, coming in, taking over the setting position. And that's something that we saw last night as well in the front row, Gabriel off, Shook in. Three O scoring runs. Part of a 6-1 overall run is O'Neill serves once again tight down the line. Big pushed it over, but Kirby there. Sanders doing a nice job swinging big here, forcing this ball to be an overpass. Kirby with nice net and court awareness there. Sanders will serve. Hey, hey. Back for Butler trying on the slide. Plenty of Texas bodies to the floor so far tonight to keep these points alive. to Fields, who will take that ball to the floor emphatically. See the defense here. Gabriel makes a layout there to save the ball. And man, Fields gets on that quick. Great start in set one for Skyler Fields. Mentioned last night, the hitting percentage numbers lower than typical for her, but six of eight, no air, 750. For a dynamic offensive piece, an all around piece that continues to develop, to develop for Texas. Gabriel back in at the setting spot. Too much heat. I think Skyler knew, hey, we haven't been giving her enough love lately. <laughs> she has opened up great. Now seven kills, 10 swings, 700. It's Texas with set point. Amani Osea to serve. It's the jump serve back in play. So we talked Texas, their dynamic offense in the middle, but at the pins, 25-17, powering the Longhorn Sky. This week, well, early in this match, it's been the Texas offense, Skyler Fields, absolutely killing the ball. Seven kills, 10 swings, 700, no air. Well, and it's because she's being smart with the ball, right? She had a couple of balls that were tight sets. She had to make some moves, push the ball, tip the ball, you know, do something different with it. But really, when she has that perfect set, she gets on it so fast, so high, and so hard. And that's what we saw last year. We saw that over and over again her freshman year. And you couldn't even believe that she was a freshman playing like that. Texas Tech saw the five service aces, but early on, really good fight, really good grit coming off that Texas Tech side. Are there adjustments that they can make to try to slow down the pins, Fields, Eggleston? for Texas. I mean, it's tough. They've, they've got to get them as out of the system as possible. And that's what you're seeing. They're serving as tough as they can. They're going to miss some because they're taking those chances. When they get them out of system, they have a better better shot. When they're in system, when they can set the middles or set the, the pins in rhythm, that's trouble. And they know that. So they're going to come out and keep bombing the serve here. Eggleston ended that set. Six kills, 12 swings. So she had 10 kills in the first set last night. Six, not too shabby as well to start this one off 417. Texas hits 471. 17 kills, just one error. 179 for Texas Tech. That power tip from Eggleston goes off the block. 
Two blocks for Texas, one for Texas Tech in the first set. As you'll see us serving. We've now seen the full complement of the serve. It's back to that big jump serve, and Coach Elliott talked about that. Opening week, we saw the jump serve, but then more of a set serve. Now back to that big arm. Yeah, he said he's gonna, they're just gonna go back and forth with it because she has a really good float serve anyway. It's got a lot of pace on it and she can move it. But when she's feeling it and feeling rhythm, he's gonna let her go. Love what he said too about when servers are missing. He said it's not like he can go back there and talk to them and say, hey, <laughs> put it in play. They know what they need to do. It's just the opportunity to do such. And that is a weapon in terms of the serve from the freshman, Nalani Yosia, that they feel they can utilize at moments. Utilizing that middle coming off a block. A dig, excuse me, from Yosia ends with Butler. Texas defense is still doing a really nice job of being in the right position, getting themselves opportunities to score in transition. Second kill for Breon Butler, Texas opening this set 3-0. That ball clipping the tape, but sailing wide right. For the true freshman from Torrance, California. Libro for the Red Raiders to serve, Emerson Solano. Gabriel Eggleston. You know, and she's just automatic here right now. Let's see. O'Brien lay out for that ball, and that's, that's set. Just keeping them in rhythm, even when it's not a perfect pass. I love what Gabriel's doing there with the outsides. Dig over. Eggleston, great awareness. And just continuing to show how her game has continued to develop as an all-around player. She seems so locked in. It seems she's making it look easy. She which is. It's, it's not. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> but I mean, when you get to that point where you're comfortable and everything is kind of clicking, it, man, it can look easy. Texas making it look easy as well. They start the second set off. And that, watch it anywhere. Fans in the building, social distancing in place. Masks are on, six feet apart. 1,500, the ticket allotment to come watch this number one team in the country. But you talk Texas Baylor, number one, number two, as we look at that last block. You'll see O'Neal know where to stay balanced and make this move quickly to close the block and get over. The Baylor Bears looming large. A matchup that will happen two weeks here will, will be in the building. Gonna be a good one. Will be a great test for Texas. Coach Elliott talked about last week, Longhorns had not had a match go five sets. They played at number 13, K-State, went five, won that 3-2. Prior to that, had dropped just one set. So on the season, Texas has lost just three sets. This is a team that is very talented, but I think Salima, when you watch them as well, it feels like they have an extra gear that they are getting to and getting to match in and match out set to set that maybe we hadn't seen in years past to close teams out and show that dominance. Well, and I know that's something they're consistently talking about. Coach Elliott said they're talking about that all the time in the locker room. We've got to be better finishing. We've got to be more dominant. And they have the ability to do it. So uh, we're definitely seeing that tonight. The Texas team last year that went 23 and 4, 15 and 1 in Big 12 play. They split the matchup with Baylor to split the conference. The overall two seed in the NCAA tournament. They won their first and second rounds here in Austin, but then losing 3 2 to Louisville, I think opened a lot of eyes. But Coach Eggleston, a leader, a captain for this team. Coach Elliott saying she came into his office and said, look, that's not happening again for the remainder that I will be here. Texas will have that opportunity. An NCAA tournament played this spring. 
And then obviously we will see what next fall looks like this season. Eligibility wise, Eggleston to come back and the remainder of the roster with the classifications that they are currently. But this a extremely talented team to watch for. We will look at later as well. Texas up by seven. Gabriel just keeping that ball alive. Eggleston couldn't win the joust against Alex Kirby. A nice job at the net by Kirby. Tight, tight ball. It's hard to track that ball coming over your shoulder for Eggleston. But a nice job by Kirby at the net. So that kill ends with an Asia O'Neill slide, but Morgan O'Brien on the serve receive, and this is something Coach Elliott talked about, that she's not going to get that opportunity a ton. The hope is that she will. For sure. I mean, you, you want her to pass as many balls as possible, but when you're good, they're gonna avoid you, right? That's what we talk about, serving different zones, moving the ball around. You're gonna avoid the best passers and in the best situations, so. It's nice when she has the opportunity to pass. You talked that overall big picture for Texas, though, with O'Brien coming in, started her career at Illinois, such great pedigree there, playing deep into the NCAA tournament, obviously tested within the Big Ten, but that trickle-down effect and what it's done for Texas, passing-wise, defensively, to then continue to get the ball to all of these offensive options. Well, man, and O'Neill just had, I think, three kills while she was front row all in different areas of the court, different positions, and changing up her shots. So the birthday girl, starting to have a good night. I like it. Three kills, four swings, 750. We keep referencing these hitting percentages for these Texas hitters. These are, are abnormal. You do not see players hitting consistently above 300, 400 even. And you have players in the 500, 600s, as a team, Texas 467 for the match. Yeah, that's that's that just doesn't happen. So the Red Raiders trying to fight their way back into this second set. That's where they were at their best last night, but you're seeing continuing the wealth of options that Texas can go to. That time, Breon Butler. And you know, this is something they say they haven't been doing a lot. You don't see Butler go behind a lot off of one foot. And Coach Elliott said, we want to get this going in our offense. We can do it. We can run it. And I like that they're working it in here, trying to get some opportunities to, to iron it out and make it perfect. And Salima, when you're the opposition coach and coaching staff, when you're trying to game plan for Texas, how difficult is that? I mean, it's hard when you have so many hitters that can score. I mean, it's difficult defensively at the net. So you're trying to figure out what are the priorities? Who could they set on a perfect pass? What might they do? And then just do your best to defend it. So you're going to do a little bit of block scheming, and you're going to do a little bit of, you know, just playing the odds at times as well. So it's very difficult. It's just that wealth of option. Eggleston, Fields, O'Neill, Butler. Phillips, where Texas Jenna Gabriel can go with the ball, or Ashley Shook when she's in setting as well. Another tough serve, getting them off the net. But Fields, with that power tip, again, it's a, it's a nice little weapon to have in their arsenal. The power tip, you got me on it now. Power serve from Yosia. Good swing from Samantha Sanders. Coach Greystone saying the key for Sanders, she can get a little too fast and rush through the play, but contact is key when she doesn't slow down and rush. Saw that on her swing, but we saw more of what we have from Texas in their pass and then execution for the kill. Four now for Breon Butler.
There's that power tip. Logan Eggleston. And that's on the second, second ball. Gets blocked on the first one. Knows she's got a big block in front of her, high at the top of her reach, and is able to just throw that ball right to the, to the floor between the blockers. Texas at an eight-point advantage as Phillips up. Doing much of the same. Six foot five, Molly Phillips. Three O scoring run for Texas. Sanders well off the net. Gabriel will try the middle. O'Neal off the block. When all of this O'Neal scoring, all of this happening is from the serve. I mean, you got to really give it to Texas. We know they can serve. They can serve tough, but they're putting a ton of pressure on a pretty good, you know, you can watch a match like this and say, oh, Logan Eggleston are like last night, and oh my goodness, this is amazing. But really, they want to continue to expand their game, and she has to work on that. Even if something's working, and we always say, if somebody's hot, go ahead and set them. But when you have the opportunity to set other hitters, that is what's going to serve you well at the end. So that's what Gabriel wants to continue to work on, setting the middles, getting the right sides involved, and not being so left side heavy as they have been in the past, but now it's getting better and better, and she's doing a really nice job of distributing the ball. Talked about her defense, the room for improvement there, and also the focus. Want to make sure her mind is talking through the whole match is what Coach Elliott said, but Gabriel committed to the process. And you're seeing the results on the floor. She goes out to Eggleston. She is just teeing off right now. I mean, really, if you can hear that swing from where we're sitting, I wouldn't want to be on the receiving end of that, that's for sure. Yeah, I'm glad we have the plexiglass. Yeah. For I mean, in my prime, maybe, but safety <laughs> right now, no. <laughs> Me, never, <laughs> no. unless I got you in front. Definitely not. <laughs> Morgan O'Brien, short serve. Ryan will try Eggleston off the block. Texas with their sixth block of the match. The defense flexing its muscle. Uh, this dig was huge by you see. I mean, just in the right spot at the right time. And then the Texas block, so it is the defense, the floor defense, the block defense that we've been talking about so much with Texas. 5-0 scoring run, that stopped. Number nine, Allison Bloss, the senior middle blocker from Argyle, Texas, getting the kill for Texas Tech. Nice speed in that middle set by Tex. And that's what, that's what they wanted to do. They want to beat the Texas block with speed. Brooke Canis with the service error. Third now for Texas Tech, so gives the ball quickly back over. A couple of whistles trying to make sure the substitution executed properly, it looks like. Coming in, Katie Northcutt. Junior DS. Texas already up. One set to none, won the first 25-17, but pedal to the metal all here in the second. Service air given back from Peterson. And that's not one you want to do at that at that juncture. You know, no need to go super hard. You want to just serve your zone, trust your defense. And a service ace for Samantha Sanders. And again, the tech team just going back there bombing. You know, they have nothing to lose and everything to gain by serving tough. They're gonna see some misses, but this is the these are the risks they have to take right now. Six aces on the match. Ashley Shook in at the setting position, front row for Texas. Back set for O'Neal on the slide. Not a bad B-Day present to play a good match, possibly get a win. I love it. It starts with a dig here. You see you see him making a nice play. Perfect dig. Beautiful set by Shook. And O'Neal to finish it off. 
That's one aspect of this Texas offense. They continue to challenge. Asia O'Neill know that they'll get some one-on-one -on -one matchups with her from the defensive game plan, but she's hitting at a high efficiency. She's getting comfortable as she gets going. The better they become is what Coach Elliott said. Looks like she's flexing a new nail color maybe for the B-Day as well. Of course, that's what you do. It's like purple. <laughs> Get your nails done on your birthday. I like that. But that overloading of zones and focusing on some of those other pieces, Texas feels they can get some great matchups for their redshirt sophomore, Asia O'Neill. Go back middle for Eggleston, finds the back line. I tell you, Shook doing a really nice job moving the ball around herself. So she's been distributing the ball really well, setting the ball behind, you know, getting some opportunities, getting some good looks for her hitters, and putting it right where they need the ball to be. It shook plenty of experience, was a 2017 ABCA All-American Honorable Mention, All Big 12 second team setting for this squad. Oh, Has seen that action. When Texas goes to Shook, six foot one, so a little taller, but what are the looks that they want with Shook in the front line? Well, sometimes it's it's the block, right? So if you've got Sanders out there, if you've got a big hitter out there, you know, it depends on the situation. You might want to her, have her come in and block and then just continue to run the office. offense because sometimes it just flows, you know, and you don't want to disrupt the flow. So she can do the same thing, but provide just a little bit bigger presence of the net. On Texas, not missing a beat. Doesn't matter, it seems, who's in there. Setting is now set point. Shook to serve. Into the middle. Lots of middle for Tech. Again, if they can just move that ball quickly past the Texas block, that's what they're trying to do to get some momentum here. Trailing by nine, but serving. Dodson has been able to key some service runs at Eggleston, the overpass on the serve, but Red Raiders can't get it back, and that will end set number two. Texas taking it 25-15. Logan Eggleston has led this team in kills every single match this season. She has a match high, 11 kills, hitting 360, and we will hear more from Texas's junior captain when we come back. Longhorns leading two sets to nine. And leadership as a captain that Logan Eggleston has provided, and we heard from the Texas junior about such. Eggleston is doing is providing the team the leadership they need. She's a captain here for this team. It used to be a huge part of what Texas is going to do. Logan is just an absolute monster. I can give her any type of ball and trust that she's gonna go up and, and put the ball away. And she's such a selfless teammate. Logan's one of those people who like helps you want to be better. She'll help encourage you, you help encourage her, and like just a good leader. I'm so thankful that my teammates have so much trust in me and really respect me and everything I do. She has been doing such an amazing job of just being the best that she possibly can be for our team, and you can really see that she's coming into her own. Well, for Eggleston, Coach Elliott talking not just about the evolution on the court, but being a leading voice for social justice. I was on social media like crazy to you know spread the message and be that voice and make that change on campus. Also, I was really big in the list of demands. I think it was a really great first step, and so I'm really excited to see what else we can do to make change happen. So the junior from Brentwood, Tennessee, graduated high school in three years and hit the ground running. Big 12 Freshman of the Year, ABCA All-American Honorable Mention back in 2018. Then 2019, second team All-American for that team last year. We talked earlier about how she felt. The season ended for Texas and that upset at the hands of Louisville in five sets. But Salima, I think more importantly, what we heard in that piece and what we have heard from Eggleston. There's a lot of conversations going around nationally, specifically with the University of Texas in regards to the eyes of Texas. We heard from her earlier this season. We heard from her last night. But to be the face and put out in, in front and to accept that role and embrace that role, it's amazing what she's doing on the court. But doing that off the court is even more amazing. It really is. I mean, it's a, it's a big deal. And it's a lot of pressure. And it's, um, it's a big weight. But, but she handles it with poise and with grace and 
with um, balance, you know, and I think that's, that's the biggest thing, and I think that's why she's such a good face and voice for, for Texas in this situation right now. I think she understands how to deliver the message um, and all the messages that they're trying to get across, and it's, it's pretty impressive to watch her do that. Yeah, and she said it last night, post game after she heard my question finally but you know really wanting to emphasize hey we love our fans we love this university and make sure that the context of what they are talking about continues to be relayed and she does it with such great energy mm -hmm. as well the smile you see just emphatic transmits really to the personality of this team it feels like and it doesn't hurt when she's producing the way that she has been. 11 kills, hitting 360. Skylar Fields helping out as well. Nine kills on 12 swings. Texas hitting 525 as a team. The Longhorns up 2-0. I mentioned they dropped just three sets across eight matches halfway through this Big 12 only 16 match. Ball schedule change on the Texas side. The Libro jersey now donned by the freshman Nalani Yosia. So O'Brien in her burnt orange 16 jersey. She was 44 for the first half of the year, but finally getting that 16 in. As Texas, just as they started the match, start set number three, go out to Molly Phillips. Nice swing by Phillips. She's been a little bit quiet. We haven't talked about her a ton, but she's always just taking care of her business on that side of the court. Okay, so take me through the decision when you change the Libro jersey and you give it to Yosia. Why does Texas do that? Well, I think it's an opportunity. You know, I think they're in a good position here and playing well, playing at a high level of volleyball. And Coach Elliott said that she is really, really good. He said, I, I can't tell you guys how close she is in so many aspects to consistently having this jersey. So I think this was just a perfect opportunity to say, let's throw you in it. We have this opportunity to do it and just go for it. And one of the things they love about her, that serve. And the first time we got to see it in person against Kansas, she was a little erratic with mm -hmm. it. And they reined her in a touch, but it is full tilt tonight. She's comfortable. I don't know. Maybe it's that black jersey giving her some more heat. I like that. Coach Elliott had said, hey, just take your mind back to the beach, Redondo Beach where she's played so many times and envisioned being there. And mentally, it seems like she may be in that place with what we've seen from the serve. She will set here for Eggleston. Long and out of bounds. Texas opening up the third, much as they have this whole match. 4-0. Six service aces, you'll see it once again. And wow, so we've seen her go down the line to the right, then serve the middle, but then that one looked like it was cut and spinning to the left. Yeah, I don't know if she meant it, but <laughs> she did it, and I like it. It worked. <laughs> I'm going to ask her later. <laughs> Four aces. It's a season high. That one just clipping the tape. But would think that the Texas staff likes the aggression they saw from their newly donned Libro. It's a nice run. It's a nice run of, of serves, getting them out of system, along with the aces. And there, reciprocated on the Texas Tech side. Sydney Peterson coming in for Texas. Molly Phillips sitting down. dumped into the net and Salima this is an interesting juncture for Texas in terms of the season they were planning to play at TCU but in accordance with the Big 12 volleyball match interruption guidelines 
TCU's matches against Kansas this week and then the two scheduled against Texas next week will be postponed. So Texas will have a long break. They don't play next week and the next time they will be in action is against Baylor. That's that's something, you know, it's it's one thing to have a long break. That's a good thing. They get some rest, but it's also you're not playing. So, you know, it's kind of one of those which is which is better? Better to be continuously at it or give them some time to rest their legs and be fresh for Baylor? Well, especially with a team that is firing on all cylinders as they seem to be for head coach Jarrett Elliott. Texas going to the national semifinal 08, 09, 10, 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16 under coach Elliott, but Disappointing conclusion to last season. But the pieces there, the depth there, the leadership, all the things that we've talked about. I think a really nice job here by Tech. On a perfect pass, you'll see Kirby jump and get O'Neal to bite. You know, that's what you want to do. You want to get her to jump and get your, your middle hitters one-on-one. -on -one. Really nice job on the side of Tech. Jenna Gabriel back as the setter, tried to go for the dump, but put some pressure on the defense. Where does she go here? Skyler Fields off the block. Fields having a, having a night, having a night. Struggled last night, six kills in three years, and now Having an excellent night of volleyball. Would you say having a field day? <laughs> 10 kills, 13 swings, 769. Texas as a team, 523. We saw them hit their best offensive clip of the season last night. I think they made best that this evening. And you watch the, the blockers. They're just hanging out here knowing that there's no hitter behind. So Fields just bunches in to get that one ball, to block the one ball. Asia O'Neill getting the full compliment on the birthday. Mom and Dad checking out the action and liking the result. 11 to 3, Texas leading already up two sets to none. But the now 21 year old saw Jermaine on Instagram earlier saying his daughter's all grown up now. <laughs> but a Great piece for Texas and how dynamic their offense can be. It's Texas Tech going into the middle. And Salim, before the Red Raiders, you talk about where they can build. Obviously, we haven't seen their full complement of personnel. But in the middle is an area that they can grow. And when they can do that, you see that they have some options out at the pin, too. For sure, for sure. And it's something that they, they're having success. It's because it's it's fast, it's beating the block, the block's not there on time, and it's something they can continue to work on. Their service pressure, obviously, the sets in the middle, and then when they get everybody back, man, this is this is a good team. And and there's good players on the court right now, don't get me wrong, this is a, this is a very good team. When they have more depth, more people that can play multiple positions, they'll be right back. Coach Greystone has had success at every stop prior to seven seasons at A&M Corpus Christi, Tenet, West Texas A&M in Canyon, Texas. And this is a coach that you really feel can direct this program and just unfortunate coming off a great year that they had last year, best in program history in terms of their big 12 finish, but not able to build on that at least in the fall with their lack of personnel. See the overall wins. Look at the conference wins going up every single season. And you can see it. You can see it in how they play. You can see it in how, you know, I said this last night, how they're recruiting, their offense, their systems. They're just doing a really nice job with that program.
Drill for Eggleston. In the middle for Breon Butler. Nice tip over the top by Butler. Last night she was tipping some balls a little bit too deep. In my opinion, now she's getting on top of it and tipping it right over the top when she has to. Going over the top there did Brooke Canis. Texas Tech, they have not taken a set off of Texas since 2017. Longhorn swept both matchups last year. They have 89 wins, nine losses, two ties in this series, 42 and three in Austin. So Texas has really taken over that dominance from Gregory to their temporary home here at the Irwin Center. A little more expansive, but just as cold. Oh, it's so chilly <laughs> in Gregory, even when it's a packed house. Over free ball for Texas Tech. You'll see it to the ground. They will, will try Butler. Saw good defense on both sides of the net, but you'll see it, Gabriel Butler, the sequence to end it. And this speed of this ball, I mean, that's what they want to do if they have a perfect pass. It's a little bit faster than what they've been setting. And she's just up and on this fast. Top of the show, we talked about Texas Middles. What they can continue to do is to put on pressure. Seeing that from Breon Butler, Asia O'Neill, and Nalani Yosia, the service line. We heard about it. Now we are seeing it. Nine aces, a season high. Five coming from Yosia. He's looking for that back corner. Missed it just a little bit, but man, she rips this ball. You, know, you can see she kind of stopped her arm a little bit. May have been going for a different area and just got caught it a little bit long. All right, so the big jump serve like that, take me through, what are the keys? Keys are a high toss, okay. keeping it in front of you. I mean, it's just like taking an approach as a hitter and then reaching and getting on top of the ball. I mean, that's it. The toss is everything on a, on a high jump serve. You have to time it. You got to be at the right distance from the line. You're going to see big jump servers go to the same exact spot, maybe even measure it off every time they go back to serve. And it just has to be consistent and right, and that's the key. Well, it has been consistent and worked to the tune of five aces for Yossi, and much as the point you just made, that set from Gabriel to Eggleston. In that last point, Does Eggleston go here up high off north cut. Some violation against the Red Raiders. Peterson with the high arcing short serve into the middle for the Red Raiders. Eggleston over, O'Neal down. So let's take a look at those service aces from the true freshman, Nalani Yosia. Coach Elliott built it and said, hey, you guys are going to really like seeing this. Man, and it's just, I mean, <laughs> she rips the serve. See how high that toss is. If you bring back with Samity and Rollins and Pittman and then adding that freshman class, I mean, I could go on and on. Nebraska, they bring everybody back, led by All-American Lauren Stiverns and Baylor, of course, as well. So, I mean, there's a lot of good teams. That that little last group in the mix, which we might get to again, might have an opportunity to talk about. There's some good teams, but we'll see. We'll see come springtime, because nah, only two of them are playing <laughs> right now. It was Utah, Kentucky, and Florida, those teams in the mix. And to your point, there are 
Five conferences playing right now. Don't see the Pac-12, won't see the Big Ten until springtime. But the Big 12 in action, the SEC as well. And you stay here at home in the Big 12 and mentioned schedule-wise for Texas. They will get next week off those matches with TCU postponed. The expectation is that they will potentially get those in on the back end of the season. So assuming the Longhorns get four more points, all eyes will now be on that matchup against another one of the teams in the mix. The Baylor Bears coming off that phenomenal season last year, splitting the matchup with Texas, splitting the Big 12. Those are going to be two fun matches here at the Irwin Center. And they're just giving the birthday girl all the love. They're going to set her no matter what. I love this. Shook just flings this ball back there from all the way across the court. O'Neal excited about that one. Peterson serving for Texas into the middle. And just to button off that Texas Baylor will be here for both nights, November 5th and the 6th. And we'll have a pregame show as well. Texas game day will get you started 6.30. Number one, number two. And that'll go a long way possibly in deciding the Big 12 Conference, who will get that automatic qualifying bid for the NCAA tournament come April, where a national champ will be crowned amongst 48 teams. Texas trying to put a bow on this one, two points away. 6-1 scoring run in the midst of Eggleston serving. On the horizon for Texas Tech, they will be at home against Kansas State and then Oklahoma the next two weeks and round out their season at Kansas. 16 matches for all of these Big 12 teams scheduled. Look at the center position goes to the B-Day gal. Match point coming for Texas. O'Neill will get to sit down. Riley Heinrich will come in, saw her last night, the freshman from Georgetown. Chance to close this one out. Move Texas to 10-0, undefeated on the year. Good long rally ended on a swing from Samantha Sanders. Six kills tied for a team high. With Boyer, O'Neill back in. Sanders to serve, still match point. That'll do it, Skylar Fields. An efficient night herself, 11 kills, 16 swings, no airs. Texas, 483, they hit as a team. 40th consecutive win against Texas Tech. 
So the number one team in the country stays perfect as they head into a long break. Won't be in action for just under two weeks. A happy birthday to Asia O'Neill, who will join us just momentarily. But Salima, Texas, very impressive across these two matches. I mean, very impressive. It, and again, you look at the numbers, what we see on the stats are the offensive numbers. You're going to see the blocks. But what you don't see is the passing, the defense, some of the service pressure that you just can't you know, quantify on the, on the stat sheet. But really, a, a pretty complete match by Texas tonight. Longhorn side out 76.1%. Hit 393 in that third set. Coach Elliott had talked to us about keeping the pedal to the metal. They did so both nights as we've gone down to the floor for the eyes of the Texans. 